Google Colab is a free online development environment that makes it very easy to get started on data analysis with Python or with R. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to work with this wonderful tool, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is search for Google Colab, probably on Google or your favorite search engine. And usually the first option should be what you need, colab.research.google. Now, when you first land here, you may need to sign in to an account. So you click here on sign in and you need to have a Google account. You need to have a Gmail account in order to use this service. So unfortunately, if you don't have that, you need to quickly create one. You can just search how to do so online. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in here. After I've signed in, this is the interface I'm brought to. I can click on new notebook here, this big blue button to open a new notebook. The position of the button may change depending on when you are actually uh, working on this video, but just look for a new notebook and open that. So what exactly is a notebook? It's a kind of file that contains both code cells and text cells, and it's very useful for data analysis. The first thing we're going to do is rename our file. As you can see, it's called untitled1.ipynb. IPYNB stands for Interactive Python Notebook. We're going to change this untitled one to maybe my notebook or maybe my first notebook. And let's go ahead and run our first line of code. In the gray area here, I'm going to type one plus one, and then I'll click on this play button here to run that line of code. The first time you run code, it may take a while because it needs to connect to the Python engine, but after that, it should be significantly faster. So now we can see that the answer to our wonderful calculation is two, and I can change that to maybe one plus two. And again, I press the play button, and now we see that's three. Instead of pressing the play button, you can also use the shortcut command enter or control enter to run that line of code. So on here, I'm gonna press command enter, and that will run the code. Or you can use the shortcut shift and enter, which will both run that code cell and open a new code cell underneath. As a programmer, you should get used to using keyboard shortcuts because they'll make you much faster. Programmers take a lot of pride in using the mouse as little as possible. A small side note is that I'm currently running this code in Python, but this also supports R as well. So you can change the runtime here by clicking on the runtime option at the top and change runtime type to the R programming language there. But for now, I'm gonna stick with Python. Now let's see how we can run two lines of code in the same code cell. Imagine I want to have the result of both one plus one, and then I press just enter, and then two plus two, and I want to show these two outputs under this code cell. If I press command enter here, you see that only the final output is shown because by default, each code cell only has one main output. In order to show both outputs, I can use the print function. And so I'm going to type print, and then I'll open up a pair of parentheses, and then I'll close them here at the end of that uh, line. Then I do the same thing here as well, okay? And you may see that Google is giving me some AI autocomplete of my code. I'll talk about that in a second. For now, I can press Control or Command Enter, and I can see both outputs there. Now, as you saw, Google has a built-in autocomplete using an AI model, but as a beginner, I recommend that you turn that off so that you can actually learn the code, and then when you get a little bit more intermediate, you can turn it back on to help you move faster. So to do that, we're going to go to the gear icon, the Settings button here at the top right, and then click on AI Assistance, and then make sure that hide generative AI features is checked. So we don't want to see those generative AI features for now. And now I can close my settings and continue my code. So as we said, there are two main types of cells inside of a notebook. You have the code cells and the text cells. Let's see how the text cells work. I can open a new text cell by clicking here on the text button there. Or if I hover under or above any of the cells, you see the options appear to open a code or a text cell. Let's open up a text cell. And in here, I will just type, this is some text. And we can apply some formatting to this text. So if I highlight all of this text here, and I click on the bold button there, you will see that it turns the text to bold. 
Now you notice that it has also put a pair of asterisks at the beginning and at the end of the text. This is an example of markdown. Now what is markdown? Markdown is a way to format text using symbols. So in markdown, double asterisks means bold and a single asterisk, if I put a single asterisk here, you'll see that will make the text italic. So the text now, as you can see, is italicized as it's rendered there on the right. We can also make some headings with markdown. So I'm gonna press enter here to make some space. Then I'll click on this button to toggle heading and it will insert a new section for me with a header. Now this hash or pound sign here is what is making this section a header. So if I remove that hash, you will see that it's no longer a header. So the hash or pound makes that a header and I can call this section maybe working with text. And now let's add some spaces in between these lines just to make it easier to understand. And when I click out of this cell, you can see that it returns in the rendered form and I can no longer see the symbols. So that's the basics of working with code and text cells. But of course, this is a data analysis course. So let's see how to work with basic data in Google Colab. So now I'm going to open up a new text cell here and I will give it a header of working with data. And then I press shift enter to both confirm that and open up a new cell underneath. And in this cell, we're going to import data. Now, what data are we going to use? We're going to use some sample data provided by Google. If you click on this files icon here, which happens to be on the left, and then you click on the sample data folder, you can see a number of CSV files that have been pre-uploaded by Google into any Colab environment. I'm going to use this California housing test.csv. So I click on the dot, dot, dot icon there, and I'm going to copy the path. And the path is what's going to help us import that data set. So that path now is copied into my clipboard. I can go ahead and close that. And now I'm going to type a bunch of code which you may not recognize, but just type along with me anyways. I'll type import pandas. Here I'm importing a library. Then I press enter. And then I'm going to type housing data. Here I'm creating a variable where I'm going to store the data. And then I'm going to access from pandas the function read underscore CSV. So that's pandas dot read underscore CSV. And then I open a pair of parentheses and uh, Google Colab will automatically close that for me. And then I open a pair of quotes and Google Colab will automatically close that. And then I paste that um, path in there. And now if I press Command Enter, the code will run and voila, I've imported my housing data. How can I see the housing data that I've imported? Let me open up a new code chunk and I'm just going to type housing underscore data and I'll press Command or Control Enter to run that. And we can see the housing data over here. So this is data on a number of areas in California and some information about houses in that region. Instead of housing data, I can type also housing data dot describe. Here I am using what's called a method on the housing data. And I open and close a pair of parentheses there. And if I press command enter, here we have a simple summary of that data set with the count of the rows, the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, and so on for all of the columns in the data set. So that's the very basics of working with data. Now I want you to do some practice. So you're going to repeat what I just did. So I'll make a new section called practice. And what I want you to do in the practice section is repeat what I just did, but for the housing training data. So uh, import the California housing train data set. Okay. And then after you've imported it, use the describe method to summarize it. Okay, and when you import the California housing train data set, maybe you can call it, call it housing underscore two. So again, I know you may not really understand the code you're typing, but just try to pattern match on all of the things I've done here. But for this new data set here, California housing train. So now we've seen how to import Google's sample data, but what if you wanted to import your own data set? Let's see how to do this. In order to do this, you're going to need to connect your Python notebook to your Google Drive. And this is very simply done. We can click again on the files option here. And then there's this button that has the Google Drive icon. 
and uh, it, it stands for mount drive. So if I click here, it's going to try to mount my drive. Google asks for permission to access my Google Drive files, and I click on OK, and I connect to my Google Drive. And now we see that in addition to the sample data folder, we also have this drive folder. If I click here to open it, I see my drive, and I can also click on that. And I see all of the folders in my personal Google Drive. So in theory, I could upload anything to my Google Drive and access it from here. I can also directly upload things to my Google Drive from here. So I'm going to do that now. I'll click on these three dots here and then open up a new folder with this button here. And I'll call it a Colab Files. Colab Files. It seems I already have a Colab Files folder. So maybe I won't do that. But you make sure you create that folder. And into the Colab Files folder here, I'm going to now click again on the dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to click on Upload. And I can upload any file from my computer. So I can upload maybe this dataset.csv. I click on Upload. And Google gives me this warning saying, ensure that your files are saved elsewhere. This is a mistake on Google's part, because here I'm actually uploading it directly to my Google Drive. Uh, so that's not a problem. You can click OK. And in my Colab files now here, that data set exists. So I can import it the same way that I did for the California housing test data set. So now I want you to also practice that process. OK, so I'm going to open up a new text cell. And here's your practice two. I want you to find some CSV on your computer or on the internet or from the internet. And for those of you who are not sure what a CSV is, it stands for comma separated values. It's basically like an Excel file. So it's a data file. So try to find one on the computer on the internet and then upload it to upload it to Google Drive. Whoops, to G Drive and then uh, try to import it, okay? So now we're basically done with the fundamentals of Google Colab that I'm going to teach you in this lesson. Let's talk about a few extra things. One is, where is this Google Colab file being saved? Where is this Python notebook being saved? And how do I access it if I come back later on? Well, this file is being saved directly inside of your Google Drive, and we can locate it in the following way. I click on the File button here, and then Locate in Drive, and that will open up the exact folder or the exact path where this file lives. You can see it there, my first notebook. And so that means you can access that file from there if you have closed this uh, tab. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to close this tab and now open Google Drive from scratch. So drive.google.com. And inside of your Google Drive, the specific place where it's going to be stored is a folder called Colab Notebooks. So if you search for Colab Notebooks there, you can see that this is your file. And if I double click on it, I will open it up back in Google Colab. So the file is saved for you. And in addition, you can also share it with others. How do you share it? The same way you share something like a Google Doc. So you can click here on the share button at the top right. And we can either add specific people by clicking here and typing in their emails, or we can get a general access link. So we can change this from general access restricted to anyone with a link. And then we click on this button, copy link. And if we send that link to anyone, they'll be able to access this file. If we want them to be able to edit the file, which we can do, we can change this from here, from viewer to editor. And we copy the link again. And now they'll be able to edit that file. And finally, if you want to download the file locally, you can also do that. So you click here on file at the top left, and then scroll to the download option. And you can download it either as an IPython notebook, IPYNB, or as a regular Python file. For now, I'm going to download as a regular Python file. And I click on Allow. And here now I have that notebook on my local document, as you can see over here. So now you understand how to create and work with a Python notebook inside of Google Colab. You know how to create code cells and text cells. And you know how to import data into your Google Colab environment. So congratulations on getting started with this data analysis journey. In the next lesson, we're going to use Google Colab to learn the very basics of the Python language. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.